Hey everybody, it's Mikhail here. Just before we get started on this week's episode, I'd just like to remind everyone that uh, there is still original artwork um, available for any new patrons over at our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash D-O-R-K B-A-J-I-R. It's pretty awesome. Original artwork. It's got depictions of me, Tessa, and Brayden with our shall you say, um, spirit aliens from the Animorphs universe. It was done by an amazing artist at Hello Puns on Twitter and Instagram. You can find her under that handle. We've also launched a new tier of Patreon at our Patreon page, the $1 tier. So that's $12 a year. That's nothing. Uh, And it gives you access to our Discord server where we are sort of constantly questioning each other's loyalty to the show or sexuality or you know general intelligence levels so if you want to insult us it's a perfect way to do it and it only costs you a dollar a month and yes the one dollar tier the new patrons at a dollar tier will get the artwork as well and again the address is patreon.com forward slash d-o-r-k-b-a-j-i-r enjoy the show Friends, one amazing series of YA novels, an insatiable thirst to relive the glory that is K.A. Applegate's literary masterpiece. This is Phantomorphs, the Dork Bajir Chronicles. Hello and welcome to The Speaking Tree, a Dork Bajir podcast where we read through the Animorph series one book at a time and talk about it every week. Today, we'll be taking a deeper dive into Megamorphs number three, Elfangor's Secret, the book we read last week. My name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. And I'm Brayden the... And I'm Brayden the... And I'm Brayden the... It's a time loop. And I'm uh, Brayden the... And I'm Brayden the... BRB <laughs> killing Hitler. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, like... For real, though, if they had a time travel book and one of them didn't kill Hitler, people would have talked. Yeah. Yeah, like, you could have killed Hitler. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, first up, let's get our... Metamil! Ooh, yeah! Metamil! Ooh, yeah! Okay, first piece of fan mail comes from Freddy from our Facebook page. Whoa. Uh, and Freddie shares with us a screenshot of a tweet from at Chinchillazilla. Chinchillazla. Anyways. Uh, and it's just simply, everyone who liked Animorphs as a kid is Antifa now. And I thought it was relevant for this particular episode because... Tobias literally kills Hitler. Yeah, and he's a fascist, so there's like that. Next piece of fan mail comes from at CodeMonkey85 on Twitter. Uh, and... He breaks down for me the four-step program to losing weight as an animorph. Step one, morph someone else. (laughs) Step two, eat all the junk food you want. Step three, demorph, eat your veggies or whatever. Step four, repeat as as desired and never get fat. Ooh. Ooh. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I got a boner. I mean, I got a food boner. If that's there's such a thing. Uh, don't forget that you guys can find the links to these pieces of fan mail in the show description for this episode. Uh, for the show, or for the show notes, or just the show description in general. Uh, show notes, show description, show summary, show uh, abstract. Is if that's such a thing. <laughs> okay. Show milieu. Let's move. <laughs> yeah, the mise en place. As if the mise will. en place. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's move on to our second segment. And the morphs. And morphs. So this week we're gonna answer the question: How would you? I think we're gonna try to answer, anyways. How would you have dealt with closing the time loop after Marco killed Visser Four? So the solution that the Animorphs came up with as a refresher is. Um, in order to stop John Berryman from finding the time matrix, they stop him from being born by going to the 60s to distract his parents so they don't meet each other. Now, uh, 
obviously a lot of problems with this. Yeah. For example, what if some other person found the time matrix? I mean, obviously. My issue with that is that, like, um, I, I, I mean, when I was reading the book, my impression was that Visor Four found the found the time matrix. John Berryman didn't. Like, how how the hell would he have? I mean, but I think we fixed that because we know that John Berryman failed actor daylights as a construction worker was practicing construction and found it <laughs> before he was yerked. See, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I guess we're not allowed to say why he had it. He just had it. The book says that as a fact. Yeah. Like he had the matrix when he was infested by Mr. Four. Okay. Mr. Four is like, oh, this is really important. I'm going to go off on this crazy vigilante mission on my own. Uh, but basically, let's assume everything that happened up to the point where they decide to go back in time to stop Berryman's parents from meeting, that all happened already. All we have to work with is where we go forward from here. All right. I feel like they go back in time to right before Visser 4 in John Berryman's body is walking to where John Berryman hid the time or, or like found the time matrix and either they move it and hide it again or they kidnap John Berryman and um, starve the yerk out of his head. So, okay. So here's the other constraint that, oh, by the way, John Berryman found the time matri- matrix long before yeah. Visser 4 was in his head. Oh, but, but would I guess, he yeah, have, they would, would he have moved it. it or anything? Yeah, you're right? right. He probably wouldn't have moved it. You're totally right. Uh, anyways. So the issue that I came up against in this whole thing is the, the lo- like this is the thing that breaks every time travel story. But what happens when you erase the memory of? Okay, wait. So your solution is make sh- kill kill this or four basically, and then move the time after matrix? he's disgraced before he reaches the time matrix. He's like cresting the hill, and you kidnap and kill him. And then for good measure, because a human already found the time matrix, like put a blanket over it or hide it in the water pipe in Cassie's barn or something. Like, just get it out of the way. It's confusing, right? Because, like, I think the rule that they say, at least it's a very strongly implied in the book, is that no matter what you changed, you remember everything the way it used to be and the way it is. And the ways that you changed it, which if you think about time travel, you shouldn't be able to, right? You shouldn't be able to, but that was a caveat that the Droid gave them. At the very be- at the very beginning, he says that your your personalities and memories will be the same uh, no matter what changes happen. If you have some way of existing outside of time and space, right. I think there's a level of leniency to what you remember and what you don't. Yeah, because arguably you could just like at like go to a time where John Berryman had found it and had not been infested, ask him where it is, because you know he lives in your town. No, wait, do you know that? Or you can just ask John Berryman, the uninfested human, as he's dying in front of you, yo, we're going to stop this. When did you find this? We can't do that because we're at the point already where he died. Oh, he's already dead. Okay. Yeah. You can assume he's in the same town because, like, as far as we know, this is where, like, that's where the time matrix is. Yeah. Why would he be from a different town and then stumble into this? That was my other question is, do we know now where the time matrix was? We do, right? Because Axe comments yes. on it yeah. at one point. It's the, yeah, we know for sure. So I guess, yeah, if the logic is you can exist outside of the time loop paradox but still affect the loop – you could move the time matrix. Now, that presents a whole other problem, which is how do you do that? Because it's huge. It's like 10 feet tall. You just yeah. like tell it to go somewhere else, though. Like You don't have to move it through space or That's through time. True. You can just tell it to go somewhere else in space. So it's really the time and space matrix, if you think about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well... Some people believe they're the same thing. By some accounts, they're the same they're thing. They're the same thing. What happened to the time matrix in the book? All they all that happens is that they're talking in the 60s and then suddenly pop everyone's back in Cassie's barn and Jake is back. They turned it into Epcot Center. Hey! <laughs> hey! hey! But seriously, this means that either Cryak or the Elemis is in charge of the time matrix, we can assume, right? They, they don't just... say anything about what happened to it at the end of the book? Not that I remember. What about you guys? No. 
Maybe Cassie took it apart and hid it in different places. I think she took it apart <laughs> into like it looked suspiciously like Lego. Maybe she hid it underneath the well. Maybe they just dumped it off on David's rat island and like just hoped Hope he would the touch best. it. Cassie made a needlessly convoluted and cruel plan and cried the entire time like this is the only way. Like d- dug a hole and then buried it under a bunch of like like a dog mass grave. <laughs> I mean, that's our Cassie. Kill him and cry over him, eh, Cassie? <laughs> And then a species of giant aliens called the Melmacrons were attached, <laughs> were attracted <laughs> yes. to the time shifting powers. How did you guess the plot of book 36? <laughs> no, actually, they hide it in the middle of the ocean, and then Atlantis comes up and swallows it whole. Yeah, this is, I, I mean, like, because any, any situation that has, like, you can use the time matrix to do something, you immediately just have infinite possibilities. Right. I mean, if you think about it, like any question I could ask you that was also you have the time matrix to solve it. You could solve it in one second, couldn't you? Yeah. And you can also go back. Like if you go back in time and fuck it up, you can go back in time again and like tell your first parts not to fuck it up. See, I think that's what pisses me off about it is that like, did you guys ever see that movie? Ah, fuck. It's not Looper, but it's like. It's got a name like that, and they and they go back in time a whole bunch, and the timeline gets fucked up. Butterfly effect. No, nope. Uh, nope. It's, it's like one word. I know yeah, what movie I... you're talking about. I've never seen it, and I want to because it gets super fucky. God, what's it called? Are people are screaming? I don't know, at us but you're right talking now. a lot about a movie that you haven't seen. I was about to describe it. So the idea is like you are the same person. I'm spoiling it now. Wait, wait. Are you, are you talking about Looper or this other one? No, no, no. You're not Looper. It's not Looper. I just spoiled it. You're the same person. All the different timelines that they follow is actually one person, but they get like a sex change and like plastic surgery and stuff. And you go crazy and stuff from time traveling until you're in the future. Is this Primer? primer? No, it's not Primer. What time travel movie are you talking about? It's like Self or something like that. Like it's very. Predestination? It could be that actually. Predestination. Is it the one where. Jake Gyllenhaal is on the train? No, it's not. Okay, but I wanted to see that one because that one looked interesting. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I'm sorry I brought this up. I'm <laughs> sorry I brought this up. But the point being that, like, you exist outside of the time loop, but maybe using the time matrix too much will fuck you up somehow. Because that's the consequence for a lot of time travel things, actually. Maybe that's how I theorized in the notes. We didn't get re- get to really talk about it, but I theorized that maybe the Elemists or an Elemist or whatever invents the time matrix and uses it to go back in time and possibly on purpose for whatever crazy reason or completely by accident eliminates the fact that Elemists ever existed so that they never invented the time machine so they did exist. So that they went back in time and eliminated themselves. So mm-hmm. that they never existed, so that they couldn't. So then they did, so then they didn't. So then they did, so then they didn't. And it reminded me of this concept in... um, in it, It's a really, really deep cut of the lore. But in Elder Scrolls, there in like Oblivion and Skyrim, there are a number of mortal individuals who gained such powerful magic... That the only thing they could do what, to get more powerful, to get, like, god levels of power, was go back in time and prevent themselves from being born to create this loop so that they could get outside of time and space and become, like, even beyond a god. I don't see how killing yourself makes you beyond a god, though. No, I feel like you would just start doing the disappearing thing. Because, like, it's, it's obviously, it's clearly not explained within the context of like actual physics it's magic bullshit Mm -hmm. yeah but like but this is hard-hitting sci-fi brayden yeah (laughs) animorphs makes sense do you remember the conversation on z space and how we all agreed it was so succinct and perfect basically the idea is if you're if you keep on flipping in and out a timeline if enough of you exists in enough timelines being created then you gain a level of 
consciousness about the fact that these timelines exist and that you are on multiple strains of them. Mm -hmm. And that is a gateway to more magic, magical and scientific power. And maybe that's sort of a pet theory I'm now holding about the Elemist. Because don't we know that the Time Matrix was created by the Five, not the Elemist? Or was it discovered by the Five? No, the Five discovered the Venbar. And then oh. they went on to their um, record all of their albums. Right, right, right. right, it was this fucking stupid ice monster thing. It was right? the yeah. ice monster thing, yeah. yeah. Huh, that's interesting. I, I, I hate to bring up Timeline by Michael Crichton yet again, Ooh. but the physics that they talk about in that book, which, I mean, whatever, it's a Pulp Fiction book. It's not going to be, like, hyper-accurate and modern with, like, physics theories. But they talk about the multiverse theory and how, like, all, like, universes are splitting off from each other at every single moment in time, all the time. And just because you can't comprehend how many universes there actually are doesn't mean that they don't exist. So for you to jump into another universe, you might not actually be jumping through time, you're just skipping to another universe that exists at another time. Yeah, I meant I kind of meant to say this last week in last episode when you brought up timeline, but yeah, like they don't actually time travel in a sense. I remember uh one character saying they just jump to a different universe that exists at another time. Mind you, they sort of like renege or like backtrack on that because yeah, cuz then one of the characters sends a message to the future and it's like, okay, how is this real? But they also do something that like actually affects their own specific universe in the future which makes no sense at all um but anyways i i I think a lot of these things are really interesting i i people hate on interstellar a lot i think i haven't seen interstellar i what i liked about that movie was that it 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 represented time travel and like bending the fourth dimension in such a way that was like no of course you wouldn't understand it because how could it be represented visually in a way that you could understand it? And, like, even the thing that we see is understandable, but to the to the characters, it's, like, incomprehensible, right? Which, of course, it would be. Y'all, for some reason, this conversation is reminding me of a nightmare I had last night where I was put in the position of the main character of the movie Moon, which is not about time travel at all. But, um, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of the heebie-jeebies now sorry (laughs) it's just really interesting and it's like i don't know whenever i comprehend that the universe is expanding into itself like i get like that windows error loading noise in my Mm. brain like i it's so difficult to think about and it's interesting but it's horrifying you know what's weird too is that uh in a phase i think it might have been in high school actually they were like we sent microwaves or some like incredibly high frequency waves somebody correct me on this if i'm wrong Uh, out into the universe in every direction from earth and waited for them to come back and all it could show you was like how far it traveled i mean we're talking like some basic ass waves here um but if you calculated the end point so the point where it bounces off something and comes back it draws a picture of the universe as like an oval around us Uh, but what's that oval in what what like it's in a marble on a cat's collar and the cat is being petted by god (laughs) yeah i don't think that was in men in black but uh, Uh, it's in like the new men in black just white black four religions back y'all i mean all right okay i think no matter what we had picked for this the time matrix being involved fucks everything up yeah so let's just say we do one of infinite solutions <laughs> and if you can't wrap your head around it that's your fault whoa, 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 whoa. just not having Barryman exist still leaves so many loopholes i think it's just way easier to wait until after Barryman has already interacted with the time matrix and then either have Barryman never get infested or move the time matrix like that just seems way excuse me way simpler or okay. go back in time and kill viscer three Save the Hork was your planet. Go back in time and distract Visser 3's parents. Go back in time and distract <laughs> your own parents. Oh, infinite loop. Well, You're now your already. brother. God, can you imagine if you accidentally went back in time and fucked it up so you were now your own brother and then you didn't I'm have you? my own grandpa. 
I don't see how you could be your own brother. I can't think of a single situation where that would work. I don't know, man. Time travel is crazy. Uh, all right. I'm drained. Let's move on to... Everyday numbers. Everyday numbers. Uh, in this segment, we try to tackle an everyday situation that did or may have happened in this book. All the normal rules of morphing apply, so no morphing humans specifically. So I initially thought, okay, what's the goof in this book? Well, I don't really want to address what it would be like living in a world where slaves exist. No. So (laughs) I kind of just went a more general tack. Yeah. Uh, How would you have used the time matrix and morphing to improve your life? Here are some very specific rules. You can only go back in time, or you can only go, sorry, you can only go back in time, not forward. Uh, You can only use it once, once, I guess once to get there, once to get back to your timeline. Or not, if you don't want to come back. Uh, You can only stay in another timeline for one day before you're snapped back to your timeline. Oh, okay, so that, that ruins what I just said. So you are, go back in time, you stay there for 24 hours, and then you get snapped back to present day. Uh, You can't kill anyone. You can't change history other than your own because of chaos theory or reverse chaos theory, like we talked about, how the chance of you being able to change anything is actually incredibly slim. Um, And your solution must include morphing. You are not simply a time bandit. You have to be an Andalite bandit. All right, who wants to go first? I'll take it. Um, it. Mine's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to go back in time, and I'm going to kill Austin with West Nile virus. You this is especially <laughs> fucked up, because you told us off mic the story behind Austin, and, like, he's the protagonist of the high school movie, and you're the villain already in real life. Just because he got a head injury and got over it with music doesn't, exu- doesn't like, exalve him from... Maybe being into my girlfriend. She wasn't. Oh my your god, girlfriend. that's what he did. She to was you? just a girl you liked. She you was like my girlfriend. Maybe she was my girlfriend. girlfriend, and so you killed him. Yes, with West Nile virus. Holy fuck! Over a long. I'm so glad I didn't period. know you in high school. I'm so sad that like way long ago when we were talking about bullies, I like equated my bullies with yours. Your bullies are saints. Listen, listen. I'd kill him with a tire iron like a fucking man. But we need to use the morph. So West Nile virus. Oh my god! Or you okay. could just like tear his throat out like a dog. Um, I would probably. Although the other thing I would do, I would probably uh do tell myself not to waste my time on any of the like higher level math or chem classes because in mm. high school because I never ended up using those and thought to beak myself to do a little less uh, drinking at some key points in time. So just tell you, on this day in October, four <laughs> years from now, don't drink alcohol. In grade and six, you're, like, you're going to oh, tell I'm that. in grade six. What the alcohol? Shut up. <laughs> Pull out those loose teeth, you idiot. <laughs> I'd beat myself. I'd turn into a gorilla and beat myself because I okay. fucking deserve it. All right. Mm. Enough mm. about your sad life. Now my sad life. I I don't know. If I if I spent more time thinking about it, I'd probably think of better answers. But like right off the top of the dome, I'm like, all right, let's go back to like college year two, second semester, doing pretty rough. You're walking around outside, sl- so lonely and sad. I was gonna say sonly and lad, and that those are not words. I'll just morph a dog and just walk up to sad, lonely past Tessa and just hang out for two hours and let her pet a dog. And then, you know, then I'd have a happy memory to cling to when life gets tough. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, it only goes downhill from here because <laughs> mine's also pretty depressing. Um, I I have two things I might do, depending. The first one was I was going to use, like, um, maybe, like, a deer morph or something. Something common enough that my parents would see it throughout their lives, but also kind of, like rare enough that it's like ooh we need to look at this for a second um and then i would it would like be at some sort of key moment where they still loved each other and then um hopefully they would see one when they were thinking about getting divorced when i was really little Aww. and then they wouldn't uh, a lot of luck involved on that one 
Uh, the other one's a lot more realistic. Uh, similar to Brayden, I would probably go back to the day that I like for sure decided that I was going to get uh, a literature degree and a writing degree and just be like, mm, just, uh, just, just read some books on your own time and dime uh, and maybe get a degree that has something to do with a fucking job like in the real world. <laughs> Listen, English majors, I feel you. Like, I know some of you have jobs, and maybe you're just better people than me, but should have got a different degree. Oh, just saying it. I can say that also. There's some people, I will say, I've gotten into personal finance right now just because, you know, I'm still lonely and sad, and I don't have any good memories of hanging out with random dogs from college. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I'm really into personal finance now, and some of the advice I've seen is like, uh, yeah, like, look at what you are kind of interested in and could be good at and would make you a lot of money and if there's something that you need a degree in or a degree would be extremely helpful do that i got a theater degree i don't regret it but like you do though i'd be making a lot more money <laughs> i mean i mean i have i got a cheap theater degree and that's why i don't regret it because i don't have a lot of debt <laughs> if yeah. i got an expensive one i'd regret it a lot more and it sucks because the world needs artists and i want people to be able to go and get whatever kind of degree they want, but we're not a socialist community yet. Gotta wait. Free university for all. And that's my thoughts on it. Oh, all around But yeah, like this question is like kind of, kind of really, all I can think of is like sad stuff. Places. Like, fuck. All right, all right, let's move the fuck on. Third question. I have one more thing before we move on from everyday animorphs oh, to make it a little less sad and a little more of our quirky dork bajir humor do any of us want to change our answer to go back in time and have and our... never let this podcast start in the first place. <laughs> no keep the podcast starting but just like i mean give yourself a better virginity loss story am i right no mine's pretty know, good this is pretty good in in that it's like frightening <laughs> in a way okay, i mean like mine's like really good too like i mean I've, but i mean like i've never had sex so it doesn't matter anyway so like i fucked on the titanic <laughs> <laughs> but the second one that was just for show <laughs> in the hollywood parking lot and i kept telling her it's a grower not a shower <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the ice water she was <laughs> like i'll never Shrinking. let go jack and you're like please don't the blowjob's not over Never let go, Jack. Never let go. No, it's your turn now. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> last segment. My life. My board. Um, In this segment, we decide on what the best use of a morph in this book would be in our own lives. So because there was so many morphs, some old, some new, I just figured let's pick three interesting ones and you could pick one that you would use in your life so how would you use either a warhorse a chimp or a hork bajir morph in your own life for purely personal reasons um i'm gonna start because mine's the worst um i would pick the chimp first of all hork bajir okay like yeah do you want to be considered a fucking freak of nature everywhere you go at all times no i would pick the chimp also the warhorse i'm allergic to horses i'm pretty sure i would like burp that shit out of my ass. I mean, you're just allergic to their fur. You're not necessarily allergic to the DNA. Mm. It's like being allergic to cat fur versus cat saliva. What decides the genetic makeup of the fur? I don't know. Up? I'm not an Andalite. Uh, it's DNA. <laughs> it's DNA. Uh, anyways, I would probably use the chimp morph because it's the, it's the most like analogous to a human. Like, fingers would be awesome. Also, being able to use your feet as fingers... It's pretty awesome as well. And then I would use it to like break into open air events like fairs and circuses and stuff and just um, fuck up some fair snacks. You know, I mean, chimps are strong, too. So you could just like break the fuck out of the doors and stuff and fuck me up some elephant ears or whatever the fuck. And just you'd have to make sure you escape before Cassie's mom comes to trank you. <laughs> she just has, well, she has like a bandolier and like a trick shotgun. She's there in a helicopter, Rambo style, just like ready. <laughs> it's like the fucking end of like Jurassic Park 2 where they're trying to get the T-Rex out of San Diego. Mm -hmm. And you just hear this like, and you look up and it's a minigun winding up with Trank bandoliers sticking out of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then Ugh. the hawk sweeps swoops by and picks up the the gun and John woos it. Yeah. And we're basically just writing an Animarchs book now. Or a John Woo movie. Ooh. Who's to say they're not the same thing? John Woo was an uncredited ghostwriter on 57% of the Animarch books. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can you believe? Can I believe what? Oh, the thing you just said. Who wants to go next? Um, I think I'd also pick a chimp. Like, and just, like, go maybe wild in a zoo and just, like, wreak havoc. Like, I love the idea of going to an open air fair outdoor park thing and just like steal a bunch of churros and climb up a ferris wheel um i'd also want to use it to get over my slight fear of climbing by like climbing up a great big tree and being strong you have a fear of climbing or just a fear of heights in general i'm afraid of a lot of things that i'm not necessarily like afraid of right now at this moment and then like you Mm. put me on the top of the empire state building and i'm gonna get a little woozy maybe that's why you can't get like a management position because you're scared of climbing that corporate ladder oh <laughs> it's true and it hurts but if i was a chimp i could assert my dominance by just like ripping a fucking phone book in half it doesn't matter if i can't do that as a person i'd still remember how that felt you easily could do that as a person ah. you know it's like a trick right no i'm pretty sure you have to be extremely strong to do it um i'm also pretty sure that chimpanzees could just bite coconuts in half so i would try to do that and if i broke my teeth doesn't matter you're in morph <laughs> boom get that okay. coconut juice out super fast Brandon? uh my answer is pretty straight i'm i'm gonna go with the hork bajir literally i could have gone with any of these but i just think the hork bajir and I would just use them to get places faster, but I feel like the Hork Vajir has more 3Ding. I could see that, yeah. yeah. Definitely more than the horse, that's for sure. What about more than the chimpanzee? I don't know, it, it sort of depends, because we don't know enough about Hork Vajir. Like, are they better than chimpanzees in a tree? I mean, Ugh. they're they're bigger, so they probably climb a little bit faster. Just by term just by terms of like how fast, like how tall they are, right? It depends, right? Because it depends on arm length and, like, all kinds of things. pork have extremely long arms. They go all the way down to their knees. Is that true? Their knuckles drag the ground. They're called the... Prince Aloran calls them gorillas in the hork Do chronicles. You, do you not remember this? No. I think it just said hork Chronicles chronals also, so that's cool. <laughs> chronals? <laughs> chronals. Well, I, it's a hork Chronicles. chronals. I asked uh, the internet what they yes. would do with these morphs. I got some good answers. Most people picked Hork Bajir, which blew me away because you're just a freaky snake monster. Uh, a lot of them included. Well, here, let me just read a few good ones. So, patron Mexanic Cut said uh, she would um, make salad <laughs> as a Hork Bajir. Like anything that needs a lot of chopping would, uh, yeah. Uh, she also said she would maybe start an Edward Scissorhands style hair salon with the Hork Bajir blades. Yeah. I love Get that. I love that laid. one. Uh, Richard from Facebook said he would shoot salad because they are salad shooters at the slant on Twitter. Hork Bajir uh, to dice up veggies when I cook. One track mind these fucking animals. A lot fans. of people hate <laughs> using knives. Y'all, it's easy to use a knife. This one uh, at Ben is your hero on on Twitter. Uh, use Hork Bajir morph to open letters slash packages. And to grind up some mids for blunts. Wait, what does that mean? I look. I asked him, and he said it's weed. Oh, what's like dandelions? Any weed that's not. Uh, oh, that's funny. Any weed that's not um, gunk weed, I guess, mm-hmm. or bush weed. Uh, loyal patron Anyanka said, "I'd be hiking, camping a lot more than I already do with a horde with Uh And also, since my house's primary source of heat is a fireplace." Having a hork bajir would make gathering firewood a million times easier. That is probably mm. the most practical, I think, yeah. answer. The most practical answer anyone's ever given. Um, Patron Julia said, I'd spoil, I would spoil a lot of ribbon cutting ceremonies with my bod knives and leap away through the <laughs> trees. <laughs> Dude, yeah. uh, Patron Esnuin said, uh, since I'm pretty close to some hiking trails in Redacted, guess I'd take the hork bajir more for a spin. Just got to go off the beaten path. You know, mind you, that is actually very mm-hmm. cool. Okay. That would be ex- – because then you wouldn't have to like – like a chimpanzee taking a hike in the woods. You'd have to worry about like finding food that a chimpanzee can eat. Hork-bajir, you can just go off into the mountains and eat bark. Who cares? 
you're fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, at one more orbit on Twitter said, I'm an archaeologist, so I'm always either walking long distances or traversing through thick woods. Any one of these morphs would be a fucking miracle for me at work. Yeah, it's true. Horses can walk for a long time. That's why they call them pursuit predators. Pursuit predators. Prosciutto. Prosciutto prosciutters. Okay, time for our very last segment. Predictions! Predictions! Next time, we'll be discussing Animorphs number 31, The Conspiracy. Brayden, why don't you hit me with some predictions? This one's real easy. They tried to be subtle about it, but it's very obvious. See... The, uh, the, the little, um, the nubbin word, um, is when they say, it's all in your head, believe it. (gasps) See, tagline, yes, thank you. And it's all in your head is prominently featured in the theme song for the Animorphs TV show. This is going to be about Jake watching the TV show and going crazy. And (laughs) what's, what's crazy, Brayden, is that the third act twist is the third season of the TV show, which we haven't gotten to yet, so spoilers, where the kids on the TV show are watching and referencing Naruto. Sacre bleu! Oh my god. Naruto! It's all in your head! Do you have a real prediction for the people who listen to our show because you're a newbie? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, Okay, how about... <laughs> okay. The TV show is a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Yerk! Forest is a conspiracy. It was all in their head. <laughs> Jake is going to find. They're going to uh, make some more moves with the year peace movement. See what they can do about that. I think Jake, in particular, will probably try to uh, get his brother out. Ooh! Yeah. So the conspiracy is the year peace movement. Yes. Okay. Or like is that. the conspiracy um, trying to get Jake's brother out? I don't see how that's a conspiracy. Uh, I mean, first, we must define conspiracy. Yes. It just means plot to rescue brother. Uh, Tessa, where can you <laughs> find more of our stuff? You can find Whoa. more of our stuff on our podcast page at CollectiveLegacy.org or on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Facebook. Remember to subscribe on iTunes <laughs> or wherever you get your podcasts or else anime. <laughs> or else Brayden will start reading all of the things that you're saying. You can also you say show them. your support for our show by subscribing to our Patreon page. Patreon.com slash D-O-R-K B-A-J-I-R exclamation point. Don't actually put an exclamation point. I was just being <laughs> pissy. That will lead you to a terrible website. We don't want you to go there. We offer special bonuses for patrons, like access to our nudes folders on Brayden's phone, Animorphs essays about some historical porn, and much, much more. Hey, man, don't joke about that nude folder. None of those dicks are mine. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. One of those much, much more is, is if you're a Horkwizier level or higher, we give you a special Animorphs stanky shout-out at the end of every episode. Starting with Shanna, colon, the imposter. Mariah Wamby, colon, the real conspirator. Andrew Vila, colon, Naruto. <laughs> oh, okay. This is how we're playing it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Adjunker, colon, the, the scabs. The... Nice. <laughs> Max had a cut the rock that I'm clinging to in this moment. Greg Della posted the, the Lovecraftian horror. <laughs> <laughs> the driven oh my God. Conan, the swollen tug. <laughs> Michael Armenta, the apology I'm going to publicly produce after this episode goes live. Martha Urquhart, the hentai. For the Phantomorphs, my name is Tessa, the export. (laughs) My name is Mikhail, the import. (laughs) And I'm Brayden, the homegrown kale. Wait, no, we should all say one word in the Dork Bajir Chronicles. The Dork Bajir Chronicles!
was so bad. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> that was amazing, guys. That was real fucking improv. I was so deep into Brayden's character, I could feel myself ticking along the Kinsey scale towards somewhere <laughs> closer to the middle. I mean, I'd suck a dick, but not a dude's dick. Hi, hello, welcome to the ad for the show. I'm Mitch, the host of Wank Talk Radio. On this show, I talk to interesting people about interesting things. Do you need to know more than that? Okay, fine. Pretty much, we'll talk about whatever my guest is interested in or passionate for. Sometimes it'll be silly, sometimes serious, sometimes a bit of both. Whatever the topic is, hopefully we'll find a way to make you that much more of an expert about it. You can find us at CollectiveLegacy.org, along with some other equally awesome shows on our network. New episodes of Whack Talk Radio are every Sunday and Thursday, wherever you find your podcasts. Let us know what you think on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Whack Talk Radio. That's W-E-N-G-H Talk Radio. Whack Talk Radio. Brought to you by... Collective Legacy, a podcast network.